Hello everyone, I'm Shiba Ramaji. I'm Director of Innovation Research um, here at MyTech. I, the job I'm really passionate about, I really love um, doing research on emerging trends and technologies, pairing it with understanding the customer unmet needs to provide solutions that transform the industry. Despite the reluctance to change, I believe construction is at a great point um, for groundbreaking innovation. And I've uncovered some compelling data through my journey, which convinced me that this is the greatest time. So I'm here to present some of that data. According to United Nations, the world population is projected to reach 8.5 billion by 2030, 9.5 billion by 2050, and 10.1 by 2060. By 2060, we are expected to add 2.48 trillion square feet of new building area, which is equivalent to adding New York City to the world each month for the next 40 years. I was shocked to learn that to support population growth, we need to build double the number of areas. And construction creates an estimated one third of the world's overall waste. Building materials account for 50% of the solid waste. Construction waste has increased 342% over the past 30 years, and it's still growing. If we don't change, we will destroy the Earth. Climate targets and commitments are emerging with new rules and regulations. So now we need to build more, build fast to support population, and build with new rules with less waste to support environment. The shortage of skilled labor is a well-known and a serious global concern. From our survey with home builders in the US and UK in 2021, 32% um, had issues finding labor for framing, and 36% had issues finding labor uh, for MEP. A poll from National um, Association of Home Builders of Young Americans have stated that millennials don't even want a career in construction industry. 60% of them have said that even if they were offered six-figure salary, that they wouldn't work for construction industry. According to our research, builders and developers are finding, are really struggling to find the right crew for the job. And 100% of home builders in US and UK say that it's really taking them long to determine the availability of the contractors and trades for a housing development. So now we are talking about building fast, building more to support population, building really uh, with new rules and less waste to support environment, and but with a shrinking skilled labor force. These challenges present companies with opportunities to adopt to more innovative ways of building. Offsite is typically faster than traditional stick framing methods as components and entire structure can be fab prefabricated in a factory setting and assembled on site, speeding up the construction process and minimizing the delays on site. According to a research, a crew can frame 1.5 more houses in 15 days and the projects can be delivered ahead of time because it would have 35 days fewer on the site, which also en enables faster production volume annually. And structural components are designed to the exact accuracy, reducing the time and the cost and also the waste on site. Um, so they, they also utilize fewer on-site materials, labor and energy, resulting in improved sustainability. So with offsite, we know we can build fast, we can build more, we can build with less waste than with fewer people. But this data that I've been presenting has existed since 2015. This was a study from 2015. And recently, I think Eric Holt has done another study. But if the data already exists and we know offsite works, why aren't we seeing the value of offsite today? Why isn't offsite widely adopted today. Now I think it is because there's a lack of collaboration and trust. We have commissioned a research across US, UK, and Australia to understand the key influencers in the design process. 
And over 55% of owner developers have mentioned that it takes them a long time to confirm the design documents are ready to be built on site. Um, and 73.3% of architects we surveyed highlighted the unmet need that it takes them a long time to convey the conflicts in the design in intent to the design team. And they also has, have mentioned that it takes them a long time to uh, convey the field modifications to the building team and determine how long it takes for them to implement those field changes. And 100% of the GCs we have uh, surveyed tell us that it takes them long to determine the optimal sequence of each activity in the construction schedule. And 100% uh, of the home builders in the purchasing role and at a production home builder tell us that it takes them a long time to determine the cost and the schedule to uh, uh, compile uh, for a housing development. So all these needs tell us one thing, that what we built is, what we design is different than what we built. It is an isolated process. And so we see all these issues with the, pre, uh, with the field modifications, and it creates an unpredictable workflow. And so the delays in the project, and also we see the co higher costs. How do we solve this, right? product collaboration at design is critical. We partnered with uh, Dodge to do a study on collaborative design with architects and general contractors. And 44% of the architects and general contractors have validated that the top barrier for increasing adoption of uh, offsite is that prefabrication is not part of the design. So collaboration at design is critical. We should collaborate with the component manufacturer to bring manufacturing process earlier in the process at design, so we design for components to leverage the full benefits of off-site construction. So what if instead of off-site instead of off stick framing, we designed to build with off-site components? We built componentized roof structures, wall panels, and roof trusses that install in half the time. How do we collaborate to bring design upfront, um, uh, manufacturing upfront in the design? Now I'd invite my colleague and friend, Ben Tabled, to share about the process that brings design upfront. Thank you, Sheba, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, my name is Ben Tabal. I am the principal of BIM in design services at MyTech. I'm an architect by trade with 20 years of experience, and I've personally experienced even prior to joining MyTech the benefits of componentization and the integration of that into the design phase, how it streamlines the process moving forward. So when we discuss things like design, make, build, we're taking a play off of the traditional design build process that's known in the construction industry, but we're inserting the make phase or more offsite fabrication, more controlled environments, better quality materials coming from factory conditions where people are overall in more of a content, precise environment as opposed to dealing with the weather, the issue, the stress, and the strain, allowing for more precision products to be delivered and assembled on site as opposed to being uh, stick framed and built in uh, the actual environment. What we found though is traditionally this design make build process up until recently in most cases design designs in a vacuum throws it make and says make it work and then you run into issues because there's not true collaboration and benefits understood. So when we talk through a design make build process even though it is linear in nature we need make and build to inform design as we move forward effectively with our design techniques to allow for optimum not only understanding but also uh, opportunity realization. What can we do better? How can we design projects better to be adapted into a make philosophy and a streamline to a build in the field as we move forward? So Sheba's already mentioned this, uh, that higher quality and increased speed, you have controlled environment, you have precision equipment, you have more of a content workforce that can be retained, as opposed to cutting on site, the risk and the issues and the challenges of dealing with that, the waste that's left behind. We've all seen examples of job sites with just junk laying around everywhere because um, people are just cutting the nearest board that it comes to them. There's no calculation process and what could be reused and coordinated and collaborated with. And that all is a streamlined build. As you do more to have conversations and discussions 
up front to collaborate more effectively with all of your trades, you make and build become more of an execution process. There's no more unknowns. You've collaborated, you've connected, and you've understood opportunity. And now it's just let's go and do it effectively as a collective team, which involves all value chain partners of the design, make, and build phases. So that visualization and problem solving, and we have examples of this all around the booth. I highly recommend you take advantage of them. But being able to understand not only what is a challenge and a collision and being able to detect that during design when you're fixing it with a mouse extremely quickly, but also identifying opportunities, having conversations with your trades in a design environment as opposed to waiting until it's a field walk and now it's going to become a costly and timely change order because you didn't have that understanding up front and earlier on. Into efficiency and quality. Being able to be in a precision environment, the saws cutting in the exact same way, it being assembled in a controlled environment as opposed to one person with a skill saw in the field and having the variation of even you know, t stud depths as, as you're moving forward, allowing that process to work itself out and be more efficient in a, a quality environment effectively moving forward. So the way we want to explain this is, and I've already kind of talked about, is this to the traditional path, everything in concept, design development, and permit drawings is really mostly limited to that design team. Very rarely will they collaborate with anyone in the make or the build phases. Yes, you might be talking with a structural engineer and an MEP team, maybe, but it's usually isolated, and then componentization consideration happens after so many decisions have been made that if componentization was included in that conversation and process, you would have an optimized solution being delivered. So then you're dealing with the challenges of what can componentization do, or maybe what decision were made during the design phase that are now handcuffing componentization and optimization to occur because those partners were not included in that process. And then that fabrication and that final construction and field assembly. But what if we look at an optimized path where you're consulting with offsite from concept? I've worked with um, component manufacturer teams as an architect where they've communicated to me even in a concept, if I shift this wall, I go from three ply to two ply on a girder and I save thousands of dollars. I'm not gonna get that type of conversation with a structural engineer partner. They're gonna engineer the building to my specifications, but they're not always gonna have that understanding of how do I optimize plate heights, panel layouts, uh, load spans, even floor systems to open web to allow for more optimization across the entire chain of the process. And that is really where the componentization partner comes along. And as you're developing that design then, you're integrating with that CM, so when you get to componentization, as alluded to earlier, you're executing. They've already been included, they've already been involved at the table and they've designed, so now it's a streamlined process as we move forward. So to illustrate this further, we have a traditional team of these partners, but we have a missing link. And we really need that off-site partner to be integrated to, in order to have a holistic, optimized discussion from concept design through the entire process of make and build. And, and many of us are familiar with this um, integrated project delivery process. The, the longer it takes for you to make those decisions, to have visibility on opportunities, they become more costly. They're no longer in a computer. You're on a job site now where you have orders, you have delays, you have delivery issues, you have trades that are now delayed to get in. But what we want to do is through an integrated project delivery method, have all of those decisions and processes determined earlier on to allow that make and build phase to streamline. And we really believe that design make build is an enhancement upon that collaborative process because many professionals would say that they integrate, but their integration may be limited simply to those design trades, not necessarily into the make and the build customers. And what we do is we also look at the, the ability to impact costs and also the cost of the design changes. The earlier up that you have that decision and that realization, you have more power and more authority to affect the outcome in a more efficient, timely manner for the least amount of cost. I use the illusion, fix it with a mouse and a computer instead of a saws all in the field. That's really how it works out when you do that. So the design make build process is an enhancement upon the integrated project delivery as we move forward. So what this provides is more value for everyone. 
that's a cliche term, but we really mean it if we think about it. Every part of the chain from design through build, the architect, the engineering team, they're more confident and more informed in all the opportunities and decisions that are available to them. The make phase feels included, supported, partnered with, and they provide expertise that the traditional design partners do not have to provide an optimized solution. And into the field, if you can go to a contractor and say that we're going to reduce change orders by 75, 80% because of this coordination and collaboration, we have a happy value chain across the entire design make build process as we move forward. So I've seen several examples of this in the works and I can tell you from personal experience as an architect, it works, it's efficient, and no, not one of us in this industry has all the answers to all the problems. We need to surround ourselves with that collective team of all of the influencers, which include componentization partners during design to allow that to happen effectively. So again, to recap what we're talking about, what we wanna have is make and build informing design and so involved in that process that it streamlines the make-build process and we have a collective, communicated, collaborative value chain as we move forward. 